more time that you're Jehovah, that you're Jehovah. Lord most high. Sing it again that you're that you're Jehovah. Be lifted high. Be lifted. One more time. That that you're Jehovah. Be lifted, be lifted. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay. Come on, you say it, say it. Hi, hi, hey. hi, hey. 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 Sing it again, say hi, 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 hi. Yeah. Hi, 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 hi. Come on, sing. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, hi, hi. I say we shall live and I say we shall live. We shall live and not die. Come on, lift it up. Say we shall live. We shall live. We shall live and not die. We shall live and you better prophesy. Sing it again. Say we shall live. We shall live. We shall live and not. Oh, we shall. Pastor told me, the pastor told me just to flow. We shall live. We shall. Now say this with me. There's a word on my life. There's a word. Brother Scott, that's why he didn't kill us on Sally Street because there was a. There's a. The enemy wanted to do it. But he saw the word, there's a word. Can you say it? There's a word, there's a word. There's a word over my life, there's a over my There's a word over my life, there's a word over my There's a word over my life. That's why he couldn't kill us in hardest. There's a word when we wasn't thinking about no Jesus. So everybody say hi, 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 hi. You can sing this say hi, 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 yeah, yeah. hi, whoa, whoa, whoa. Last time say. We shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. Oh Lord, we shall live and we're gonna live. We shall live and we shall live. Just let that sit in your spirit just for a moment. Oh my 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 my. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 ah, yeah, 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 but he knows what we mean. I die, boy. When we see. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay. America needs life. Now. Ay, 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 ay. Death is all in the air. We need some saints. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. ay, ay, ay. I 
Isaiah chapter 6. Ike Yalabalo. Somebody say hi. Chuko Shalaba. Sotomaya. Somebody say hi. Somebody, somebody say life. We speak life in this room. Hallelujah. Death, they've been speaking death on the news. We've been speaking death to our marriages. We want to say Jesus and we want to speak life, man, and what we say Corona. Some of us say Corona more than we've been saying the name that cat gets results. Can somebody say hi, 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 Lord, I can stay there for a Come on, you the power of life and death is in your tongue. I don't know, I don't know how they didn't know how to say it biblically correct or in grammatical, but the old mothers used to say, God don't need no coward soldiers. He needs somebody that's speaking life in the face of death. And I want you to know the Lord let me know a few months ago we can't speak life. Hallelujah. While looking at life in the face, you're going to look at death in the face. Hallelujah. Sometimes you're going to have to look death in the face and speak life. Come on, kid. Be like he said. Can these dry balls live again? Yes, they can. If you open your mouth and say, Come on, somebody need their marriage to come on. I ain't flying, flying. Come on, the enemy has conditioned our ears to be able to sell junk. Hallelujah. We started dying because we take more of that in. But if you can speak life, Kavah. C H A Y A is the Hebrew word, but it pronounced Haya. <laughs> so we. You watch the old karate movie, they chop, chop the enemy higher. You need to keep chopping the enemy higher. Life of them. Kill the enemy, bring up higher. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Chop poverty down. Chop murder down. Chop higher. Put life to it. Everything that's not pushing you toward God is death. And you need to put life. You, you put life in there by killing it. Hey. I'm just going to go with the ghost. I'm going to flow with the Holy Ghost. Isaiah. Somebody back there still saying it. I had this young, boy, um, young man inbox me four, two years ago. He said, I heard you saying hi. And my wife had miscarried a couple of times. He said, but we kept going and saying hi out to the womb. He said, we ain't had no children then. Now we got four of them. Y'all don't hear me. Now you might not want four children, but you want God to do something. You want him to reproduce something positive in your life. You want him to bring up something seems like it's dead. I'm telling you, saints. I'm telling you, you got to open your mouth. I'm looking on Facebook I'm looking all over and I see the saints responding wrong I see the saints speaking death that you don't have to say death to speak death when you tear one another down in Galatians 5 and 15 say we bite and devour one another lest we consume one another but how many are willing to speak life? Come on, one more time, give him praise. We give honor to God, to Apostle Merritt and his lovely wife who's not here with us today. Let's give God praise for them and give God praise for our, my friend and brother, Elder Charles and his lovely wife, Sister Charles. Let's give God praise for them and all of God's children, my family, hallelujah. My physical and spiritual family, it's good to be here to the worship leader. Man, I was trying to stay in that spot, I'm trying to tell you.
because sometimes he, and if we worship him right, God calls a quarterback sneak. You understand what I'm saying? And, and sometimes he'll do it, he'll speak it by himself in the middle of your worship. But since sometimes we're not as mature as we should be, then we have to have a preacher. And don't get me wrong, you should have him. But sometimes, how many know what I'm talking about? God say, I ain't, ain't nobody going to say. If you go a place in worship, he'll say, I do the talking. You just do the laying on the floor and hear me. What I, anybody ever been there? I'm about to take you to a scripture right now that where we, he was there. But we give honor to God. Let's go to the word of God real quick. Don't want to behold you long, but we do want to get say what the Lord says. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 1, then I'm going to read verse 6 and 7. Now I got the new, don't y'all shoot me now, I got the new King James Version. But uh, he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe, Filled the temple. Verse 6 is where I really want to be. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. And your sin is purged. Verse 3, let me go back there. Let's go back up. And one cried to the other and says, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy. The whole earth is what? Full of your glory. They did it like this. One would respond, one side of the on one on the side of the post said, "Holy, holy," and the other side said, "The earth is full of His glory." Can we mimic heaven for a minute? I want this side to say, "Holy, holy, holy." I want this side to respond, "The earth is full of His glory." Come on. Yala. And the worship kept going. <laughs> but it happens in the year that King Uzziah died. And you can be seated right here. I'm going to teach this lesson. We're going to get out of here. But it happened in the year. King Uzziah died. What's the significance of Uzziah dying? What's significant? Because Uzziah was not the prophet of the day, but he's the king of the day. And as we know that, that the king could be good or bad, but Isaiah the eagle our prophet is living in a day and time that when he says God tells him something, for this little bit, he has the luxury of having a king that goes along with what he said. And the king does not oppose what the prophet is saying. So it makes it a little easier to say, thus said the Lord, because the king is not opposing what he said. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's good. It's easier to say a thing when we got a certain endorsement. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't hear me. Y'all hear me? It's easy to worship the Lord when everything is going good. Y'all know. It's easy to say, I love the Lord. Y'all, oh, oh, I'm getting ready to get in trouble already. I'm an old school preacher. I'm just got black, I got black in my hair, you know, to make me look younger. But I'm old school. And, 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 but it's easy. How many know sometimes it's easy to lift my hands and, 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 and when, when my job is flowing pretty good and, and the children doing all right and I'm eating pretty good. Y'all can look at me, tell them I'm eating good. But then when something comes to threaten what it seems like, that messes up my flow. Y'all know what I'm saying. Uh, if something comes like 2020, yeah, because here at the top of 2020 when everything began to happen, I, they laid me off on my job. Y'all don't hear me. 
And, and, and so, so, so I was saying God is a good God, but this time I had to, I had to believe that. Y'all don't hear me. I had been quoting for years, Brother Brian, that, that, that I've, I was young and now I'm old and I never seen the righteous forsaken. I used to say that, but listen here, Channing, in November, I can tell you with conviction, I ain't just quoting, I would never seen the righteous forsaken. And look at me, I ain't begging for no bread. Look at somebody say, I ain't begging for no bread, man. Who is it in here since you've been serving the Lord? He actually blessed you better in the pandemic. I wish I had. If, I, if I'm talking to the saints, I, I don't want no more pandemics to come. You hear me? But I do want that pandemic. Black, y'all know my. Hallelujah. Because what I understand that the Bible concept that Adam Silver came up with, he actually stole it from Jesus, you from God. Because meanwhile in Goshen, you don't hear me. How many Goshen dwellers over here? Let me see the hands of the people God been blessing you. Has it blessed you in the pandemic? Got there, sister, sister Charles. I got there in the pandemic. He was blessing me so much it scared. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. Somebody said, whoa. Because how many know you, God, you can see the hand of God so good, it'll, it, it'll say, whoa, whoa. Because see, sometimes we say stuff and we don't actually believe it. We be out quoting scriptures, we don't believe that. But when God actually shows up, you be like, whoa. <laughs> oh, that's, you don't see, that's what Isaiah said. He gets into the presence, he said, whoa. Yeah, I've been talking about, but whoa. Anybody in the Lord has blessed you, so you say, whoa. You. So he gets into heaven. I'm almost finished through here. He gets, his heart is broken because he loves Isaiah, I'm Isaiah right? He, but also, now it's going to be hard to speak what thus saith the Lord. It, 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 it's gonna, he's going to say it, but, but, but the endorsement that he usually have, he doesn't have anymore. You know, uh, and so it is in the year that King Uzziah died. When your heart is broken, that's when you're really going to see God. He's real close to them, the Bible says, of them that what, have a broken heart. If you're going through a broken heart today, I want you to know God is not that far from you. As a matter of fact, any, any witnesses in him that God is a mender of broken heart? He's. So, so, so. so Isaiah is heartbroken. Uzziah is gone. And he enters into a worship set. <laughs> Already in progress. You read it? He said, and one, and one he, he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. He, he, he didn't even see his face yet. Just, just what he was wearing was so great. God is so, it just, <laughs> God has a way to be seen and not seen all that. Don't you know all the beauty of even of the earth now is his robe? Y'all ain't talking to me. What God is doing in your life is his robe. You ain't even see his face yet. Right? He, he, he said, I saw the Lord and the train of his robe fills the temple. And, and then he said, he entered there at two ends of the post. There's an angel said, holy, 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 the earth. And then one would say, the earth is full of his glory. Bible said the doorposts begin to shake. And the smoke begin to come. Now, I ain't messing with people's smoke. Y'all, if you got smoke, if that's cool. But I think we've, we've gotten into the place that we want to manufacture smoke. But when, <laughs> see, 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 but when you worship, right, we ain't looking for smoke. We're looking for fire. And if we get fire, smoke going to come. You ain't, got, you ain't got to go to buy no smoke. See, churches, they're going to buy smoke because they ain't got no fire. They fascinated with smoke, but I want fire. Well, how many want fire? While y'all buying smoke, I want fire. Give me fire and smoke will come. Oh, 
I need somebody who want to fight. Oh, him they used to sing at my church. Oh, Christ, thy cleansing flame. Thy blood brought gift the day we came. Send the fire, send the fire. Look down and see this waiting host. Give us another promise, Holy Ghost. We want the power of Pentecost. Send the fire. Somebody shout, send the fire. Lord, I love them old hymns. They don't like to sing them, but I sing them where I go. It goes to the second verse that God of Elijah, hear I cry. Send the fire, send the fire. He'll make us fit to live or die. Send the fire, send the fire. This is my favorite part. To burn up every trace of sin. To bring the light and glory in. The revolution now begins. You said, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire. Grandma got to the third verse, bro. She get to it. And she's saying this what? To, for strength to ever do the right. To faith to conquer in the fire. For power to walk the world in white. Send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. Somebody shout fire in here. Chandler Moore says like this. It's the altar's way to warn us. Take me there. Take me there. If you're looking for an offering, I'm right here. My life is here. And I'll be a living sacrifice. You're the fire. Send the fire. I want to be consumed. So they worship. He gets there. And he's in a worship set. And we stop about worship. Let me stop about worship because, because he's worshiping God, right? He gets in. His heart is broken. And in other words, in order to really get into a place of God, in a place of worship, you must be broken. Arrogance is not allowed in the present. Right? So here, here's this. So, 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 so let me teach you worship so we can move through here. He worships the Lord and he begins to see some things he's never seen before. Now, Wonder why that happens because it started in the book of Genesis. Right? God makes man. All right, worship. Everybody say worship. He, he makes man. But let's think about He makes the beast of the field, He makes the fish and put them in the sea, and He makes the birds and then, uh, He makes the, the, the sky and then. He puts the bird in the air. Okay, let's say that again. He creates an environment from, day, from the beginning, preacher. But he does not create the creature until he creates the environment for him to thrive in. All right, all right, all right, all right. He, he, he does not create, he creates the sky first. And then he puts Mr. Bird in the sky. There's a field first. And then the antelope and the and antelope rain, roam and the beast begin to roam. He creates the, the, the sea and then he put the fish in there. He creates the, so, so he puts the fish in the, in, the, in the water. He puts the beast in the field. He puts the birds in the sky. But, but, but he, he puts the man. Where does he put him in the man? He, he creates the man and he's put him in where? The garden of Eden. Now anybody know what Eden means? It means presence. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all just miss. So, 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 anybody ever seen a fish out of water? In the water, he's graceful. Out of the water, he flops and flounders. Y'all don't hear me. And some of us, we flop and flounder throughout life and we're gasping for air because we're not in the proper in ideal environment. You ever see? Oh, God. Feel you. I'm preaching good. I'm pre I'm preaching good, and then y'all responding. And he, he, he took my boys, took my boys a few years ago to the park to to to, to Bear Mountain, and, and, and there's there, there there's a zoo there, and, and the bald eagle is in the cage, and he's real pretty in the cage, but the cage has a net. He can't go but so far, and, and my boys can first time they get to see a bald eagle up close. And he's pretty, but but he's not. We don't see his maximum beauty. As much as he on the ledge, and, and that pretty white head that contrasts the black body, he is not even beautiful as could be until we get him in the sky. I say, Avery, man, if you really want to see him do something, get him in the sky. If you really want to, I 
operate like you're supposed to on earth as it is. Get in this. Y'all don't hear me again. And so Isaiah has sense enough to know my heart is broken, but if I can worship and get in the right place, my idea, that's why the enemy don't want you to lift up your hands and say thank you. That's why he wants you so cute and co co so, so sophisticated because he know if you ever get in the idea so if you with me can you begin to get where you belong Shateyana, hallelujah come on can you worship I'm just getting in my spot I'm just getting where I belong so he gets there he gets there. I'm almost through. He gets there and he worships. Worship is how he gets there and worship is what he sees when he gets there. <laughs> but you can't worship God and not be changed. So when we get people that sing and play instruments and they take they worship and their lifestyle has not changed. They did not worship. Oh, y'all ain't talking loud. Huh? Because immediately when he worships and he sees God, he sees what God, he says, whoa. Everybody say, whoa. whoa. <laughs> and he don't see his brothers and sisters. He said, whoa is. Bro, he sees God. He said, he, he said, look at here. <laughs> I'm a man. Of unclean lips. Do you not know people don't have a proper sense of themselves if they don't see God? When she sees God, he gets a proper view of himself. <laughs> and he don't all put the blame on everybody else. He'll say it next. He said, first, woe is me. Then he said, I'm a man of unclean lips, and then I dwell among people of unclean lips. <laughs> and he confesses that I don't have it all together. Is that not what? Look, I'm reading. Out. So he said, woe is me for I'm undone because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I do, my, the people I'm hanging with ain't got clean lips. <laughs> I see anybody else. So the Lord told me, he said, so, so, so sometimes we don't see what we need to see. We don't see ourselves properly because we hadn't seen God. Because if you see God, you'll see yourself. How many know once that holy light hits you? Lord told me, maybe I'm, maybe I'm revealing too much. One day in the worship, real, real, real recently, very recently, Lord said, you got some pride. Got some pride you got to deal with, bro. And Here's the proof that I know I had it, bro. bro. He said, I said to God, who, me? Yo, yo. The moment you say that. Yo, yo. When I said, uh, you know, Abraham, uh, you know, Sarah said, God said you laugh, and she said she didn't laugh. When God said you laugh, if God said you got pride, you got pride. He don't want you, but he's not, he's not exposing you to kill you. He's exposing you so you confess it. And the moment you confess, he said, that's good. Now go down there, Seraphim, and burn it up, and I'll take it away real quick. But you got to tell the truth in here. I'm struggling. Tell the truth. I got perversion on me. Tell the truth. I need help in my marriage. Tell the truth. All you got to do is look in somebody's direction and say, let's just tell the truth. Here's what I want you to tell. You got to come clean to get clean. Come on, sir. <laughs> oh, no, I just preach you now. Tell somebody, you got to come clean to get clean. Tell God the truth. <laughs> so he woke me up and gave me this scripture to preach to you guys. But the truth is, I got scared. Come to the glorious remnant. But when you come over here, these preachers done been upside, downside, side by side in the book. But here's how I know God meant for me to be here. I was coming from taking pictures. 
and we took pictures way over in Mullins. I'm driving back down the road. I passed the fairground. It made me think of apostle, but I'm just driving. And I'm just thinking, I said, man, yeah, I missed the revival. And I watched them preach. I said, I'm just thinking of what the Lord's doing with I, and I don't talk to him like that. I talk to him every now and then, perhaps. I look down at my phone just uh, briefly. He said, I need you to preach. I said, like, what? I just was thinking about you. Because when you worship God, he knows how to send central intelligence. <laughs> I said, what am I? So, so I said, what am I? you got Elder Charles over here. You got all these deep preachers over there. They know how to preach. So the next morning, the Lord wakes me up. He said, Isaiah 6 and 6, 324 in the morning. Because here's what I want. You know, I'm not an internet preacher. Now, we talk to the Lord every day in our daily devotion, but I talk to God to, to live, not just to preach. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what we're going to say, and because I don't want to give you a stale message. I want to give you what God says for you guys. You know what he says in Jeremiah. Where are the prophets who have been in my presence? You got the labor for that word. But he says, Isaiah 6 and 6. And I say, what does that mean? And I forgot about the name of the church. He's preparing Isaiah to build the remnant. Those that would hear him. Now, everybody's not going to hear Isaiah, but there's going to be somebody that hears him. His heart is broken. He's crushed. He's in the middle of a crisis now. Because cause, cause Uzziah is there. But he finds a way to worship God. Gets into a worship set. Now my, I don't got so far, but my topic was going to be you better recognize. That's what it was going to be. He gets in his presence. He recognizes there's God. Did, did, did he realizes that he's a man of unclean lips. <laughs> And when he recognized that this is God we're dealing with, he realizes where he is in God as it relates to God. Then the seraphim, and because when I'm beginning to study, God just kept lifting verse 6. And I would try to go deep. He said, no, go back to 6. The seraphim, and here's what the worship leaders and the church going for. Verse 6 said that one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hands a live coal which he had taken from the altar. Okay? Seraphim. Can I read verse 7? No, go back to 6. Well, the one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand, he, he, he having his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs. Okay, Lord, I read it. So I went to another version. And it says, God said, so, so, so check out, who is this seraphim? This dude, Hangs around at the altar all the time. All right. He's, he stays in the presence of God. Now, the messenger angels, Mike and them, they'll go off sometime, but the, the, the seraphim, and a matter of fact, this is one of the only scriptures in the Bible where we even mention the seraphim. So we dig a little deeper, and in his presence, bro, here's, here's, here's what's cool. Can I talk real talk in here? I, I, I might be ain't got no deep preacher lingo, but can I talk real talk to y'all here tonight? And so he's in the presence all day, bro. And, and, and so, but while he's in the presence, the seraphim, had, he's a six-winged angel. God, he recognizes the holiness of God so much. So with the first two wings, he closes his eye. He covers his eye. He's an angelic being his own self. But this God that I'm in the presence of, I ain't even worthy to look at. He takes the first two wings and closes out. He takes the other two wings, closes, covers his body, and the last two covers his feet. Because I can't be, I don't, I, I know, I know you think you look good. I know you think your gift is good. I think if, but listen, you're not worthy. You're not up there with God. Come on, man. Let's go. God. Preacher, he covers everything. In the presence. And so, God, so his humility is so great. He gets to stay in the presence of God all the time. 
His humility is so great. See, see, so that's what the deal was wrong with Satan because Satan was beautiful too, but his humility was going great. So he got, but when your humility is great, when you always don't have to have the last word, when you can listen to leadership and obey submissive, if you can do that, you can hear from him all the some people say he ain't here from God. That cause you one of them people that don't always do what you're supposed to do. You ain't got great humility. But for us that hear him all the time to understand that y'all talking junk about people in the body, you ain't need to be talking about people. Now I'm finna mess with y'all. It's been fair leadership in this day and time. It's been fair game. It seemed like the people, to, no matter how bad leadership, to bludgeon leadership. All right. Now, if y'all, if, if I, Pastor invited me. So the outgoing president, we, saints bludgeon him. Uh oh, uh oh. She kind. He said some bad stuff, but we, you're not supposed to bludgeon him. Uh oh. <laughs> You okay, okay. They, and this don't like everybody don't like me talking like this. Because the Lord showed me about a month ago. Everybody, the president, Trump this, Trump that, Trump that. But, 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 what, but you got to act like God. If what dominates the mind of the world dominates the mind of the saints, somebody wrong. So you remember when Daniel was put in the lion's den? It was the king's orders that got him there. <laughs> you post, listen, America, I don't care who, can I say this? Can I say this? Let me let hold on. When we get to heaven, it's not going to be my country, tis a D, but it ain't going to be Wakanda forever, neither. Nobody don't want to, they, they don't want to listen to that. See, because that's what we acting like it gonna be. Because if he a black man, white man, plaid man, if he don't have the Holy Ghost, he's gonna show, he's gonna sooner or later show out on you. Ask the oh God, come on, man. Ask the house slaves and the field slaves. Because if God is really gonna use you, you are gonna have to be having the, the humility of the seraphim. You can't talk when your emotions, your emotions can't be your leader. So here he is. Let me close it here. He covers his face. And the moment Isaiah says, woe is me, and confesses, God said, cool. He ready. <laughs> God is going to elevate somebody in the moment you be truthful about what you doing wrong and what you need to do right. Not by what they did, what you need to do. And once he does that, he's going to say, he ready. He takes the coal with tongues and he puts it on his tongue. Wonder why? Because when God puts fire on your tongue and you're humble enough, the fire don't burn you, but it burns what, what needs to be burned up. When you burn, because fire can be used to burn or it can be used to cook. God. When your humble God, when he getting the fire, he cook you. God. And somebody getting anxious because the fire taking too long. But how many know, I, I'd rather have, I ain't nothing like some, you know the difference between baked macaroni and microwave macaroni. Somebody say, cook me, Jesus, cook me. Because when I come out. Hallelujah. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. If you, you, you don't know, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you done had macaroni, uh, uh, baked macaroni, you know when somebody trying to feed you something. Y'all don't hear me? You know when they try. You can tell somebody who been in the fire. Come on, man. We, we, at St. Matthew's, we've been writing songs in the, in the virus. My, ba my one-year-old baby at home sang in the song I wrote. Wrote the song, In This Life We Face So Many Things to Test Our Faith and the load can be so heavy, seems too much for us to carry. But just when we need him most, we have the help of the Holy Ghost. The choir said, we're coming out golden, we're coming out gold. 
And this is what my baby say at home when they get to we get to the van say go 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 we're coming out go I don't know what you've been told go 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 he said go try it in the fire I'm be ready he comes out he said now you ready you ready to be used it's been in the crisis God was trying to cook the church. But if you're not humble, we, we, Bishop said something this morning. We still have not faced this crisis with the humility that we should. But those that have faced it with humility and used it as a chance to get closer to God, he said, you're coming out gold. And then I like how God does things. I'm closing here. He puts the coals on his lip. And verse 7, let's go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. And you'll see. <laughs> it ain't because I'm perfect, but I just told the truth. He took it all away. Who to know tonight that they're not perfect? But you told that thing to God and he took that thing away. When you recognize, realize, and let's go to verse 8. He recognizes, he realizes, verse 8 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. Listen, I, I'm a daddy of four young kids, and I learned how to parent from God. Here's God asking a question. First of all, he's God. So he never asks a question to gain information because he's God. Because what makes him God, one of the things that makes him God is he already all knowing. He's not asking you to gain information like you're going to tell him something he didn't know. He's asking so you can know God changed him and said, uh, who going to go for us? <laughs> the dude I just changed. Isaiah recognizes, realizes, and guess what he does? He responds properly. I'm asking you, this is not a hard jump message, how will you respond after this, in this crisis? Because after this, he's not the same. But my question is, have you recognized? Have you realized what God is doing? Now show me how you're going to respond. He responds with a fruitful life. He says, here am I. Send me. I'll go. We are living in a time where the, the fields are white in the world. And the church is distracted, fussing at one another. But there's a glorious remnant. That don't care whether you white or black. Care you Republican or Democrat. Because I'm here for a kingdom agenda. And he's looking for people that's full of humility. I want you to begin to worship him now. But why did I say respond? Because worship that we do is a response to realizing who God is. All right, you hear me? At the root of the word worship is worth. And so since we realize that he's worth a lot, we respond properly. Your response to his presence tells me whether you think he's worthy or not. Y'all hear me? Okay, I say it this way. To tell someone's worth, the house people, they call it appraisal. And I found out some of us don't praise him right because we have not appraised him right. We don't think he's worthy. 
for me to lift my hand, for me to submit my life. How many know he's worthy right now? He's worthy so much so that I would take the CDC precautions, but I can't stop coming to church. I still got the press. That's how much he's worthy. But people, non-Bible people get clever enough to say, well, well he said we are the church. But he still say, fail not to assemble thyself together. Say, you ain't say that at Walmart. When them people told you to get back to that job. Because what we keep saying, you can say what you want, but you're telling God he's not worthy. The Winers wrote a song, say, I haven't heard a verb or no, but your actions show. But I believe we're in the room with some worthy people that believe he's worthy. Can you lift your voice to him right now? We're getting ready to close. Right I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Oh. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. You said, I will say. I don't know how you do here, but can we, is there an altar call? Or you can stand where you are. If you could come.